We begin in Australia where a thick haze is enveloping Melbourne as smoke from the bushfire shroud the city. Victoria's chief health officer says the air quality was the worst in the world overnight. It's making people cough and wheeze and causing nose, eye and throat irritation. But there is some good news. The country is expected to get some much needed rain this week. Officials are hoping this, coupled with the drop in temperatures, will help dampen the fires. CNN's Will Ripley joins me now from Mittagong in New South Wales. Will, some good weather news there, but what's the latest on efforts to contain these raging bushfires and what's the assessment of the damage and losses so far? It's really touch and go right now, Rosemary. Even though, yes, there is rain in the forecast, the temperatures are noticeably cooler, I can tell you from what we saw out on the ground today, all it takes is for temperatures to spike up just a bit. And if it's uh, there's a spark or just the right kind of condition, and all of a sudden these, st these small fires are just triggered right back again. We actually saw it happen. And even though most of the time fire crews are able to get in there in time to put it out, if the wind were to pick up and a spark were to fly, well, then you're right back to square one because there's still plenty of fuel on the ground here. And that is, of course, concerning to firefighters across this state. Here in New South Wales, we know there are 100 fires or more that are still burning right now, even though firefighters say they have made progress and they're hoping Mother Nature will help them in the coming days. And of course, the Damage estimates are just now starting to pile up. People realizing just how much work lies ahead as they try to rebuild their lives. In Wingelow, Australia, nobody imagined the fire could move so quickly. The front line was miles away from David Bruggeman's home and store last week. But then we saw the sky go red. And we go, that's not normal. Then we heard the sound of the fire. It's like a furnace like a freight train right next to you. That familiar sound followed by a terrifying, almost apocalyptic scene. Another house gone. The Morton fire, so intense, it created its own weather, raining down fiery embers on this village of about 500. And this house is exploding, fire everywhere. And think, my house is gone for sure. That picture you took, you thought would be the last you'd ever see of this place. For sure, I figured that's it, gone. A feeling shared by Wingelow Fire Captain Mark Wilson. It's different when it's your own town. Like I've, I've, I've been everywhere else, helped out everywhere else, but the emotions and everything kick in going, yeah, this is my house, my friends, my loved ones. Wilson's team of volunteer firefighters battled throughout the night. It's a feeling like you're losing. You, you don't realize how much you have saved until the next day. We saved well over 80 houses that night. Even the most seasoned firefighters say it doesn't make sense how a house like this can be standing, the bushes are green, and yet just a few steps away, everything next door, gone. The fire danger is far from over. We've got a fire at, um, over at Peter and Simona's. As temperatures heat up, small fires reignite. But how quickly could a small, you know, hot spot turn to a, a dangerous situation? Oh, very easy, because we've still got a lot of unburnt trees in this property and very quick, especially with the little breeze that picks up. Here in New South Wales, Australia's hardest hit state, the fire season is only halfway through. With the shop, there's no other shop here and we're the centre where everything is. Brueggemann says he's doing everything he can to help neighbours who've lost everything. We thought we should have lost about 50 houses and people dead. No one died, no one injured, and we lost a dozen houses, but all those people are taken care of now. It's a miracle. I call this the miracle of Wingelow. Nobody knows how long that miracle will last. Insurance claims are already starting to pile up. We just learned within the last few hours that uh, more than a billion U.S. dollars in insurance claims have been filed here in Australia. That number undoubtedly going to rise in the coming days and weeks as people get back to their homes and assess the damage. And Rosemary, talking about that smoke there in Melbourne, we experienced heavy smoke uh, just within the last couple of days here. The wind has now thankfully blown it out of the way, but I'll tell you there's nothing more exhausting than walking around outside and just breathing in that thick smoke, something that a lot of people uh, here in Australia have been dealing with for the last several months, and it really does take a toll.
It certainly does, and birds are actually falling out of trees, dying because they just can't take in that sort of level of smoke, and that's in Canberra and other areas of Australia. Uh, many thanks to you, Will Ripley, joining us from Mittagong in New South Wales. Britt McLeod from Nine News is with us from Melbourne. You know, I, 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 that is just horrendous, that sight behind you, because I know what it normally looks like. So it was worse overnight. It's clearing up a little, but this is going to be around for months. This, unfortunately, John, looks like the new normal. That is a live shot here in the afternoon in Melbourne, and that's better than it was this morning. We woke up to the worst air quality in the world, according to the Air Quality Index. It's now just the second worst in the world of the taste of things to come. And that's, of course, because of these bushfires, which have been burning for several weeks now in the eastern part of this state, Victoria, and the southeastern part of New South Wales. Millions of tonnes of smoke has gone into the air. It's continuing not only to swirl around this part of the world, but the initial smoke has now drifted across the entire planet. NASA says it's now covering part of South America and will make its way back here. So unfortunately, health authorities are saying get used to this as much as you can because we're going to see more of it during this summer in Australia. They've already warned people today to stay indoors unless you have to go outside. Public pools were closed, a race meeting was cancelled. We've seen, even seen tennis matches leading up to the Australian Open cancelled because of this horrendous smoke haze. And one of the things here is that this is so bad, it is so toxic, no one is safe from this. I mean, normally you put out warnings to children, the elderly, those with you know, respiratory conditions. This is just dangerous to everybody. It is. They're saying that people who've never had asthmatic conditions uh, before may very well be affected today. They had a run on people buying the P2 face masks that many have adopted. They've sold out. You can't get them anymore. Uh, a lot of people, for, it's the most safe thing to do is simply to stay inside. But not everyone has that choice. A lot of people who work outside, for example, uh, the construction workers were told to stay in. Some chose to ignore that. Some have ended up in hospital as a result. In New South Wales, when there are similar conditions, at least one person is known to have died as a result of uh, respiratory problems brought on by the smoke haze. So it's certainly no laughing matter. It's an issue that people have to take very seriously. And unfortunately, as the fires continue to burn, the smoke will stay with us. The estimation is, the best estimate is, that these fires probably won't be put out any time before March. Wow. And you also have to question, you know, just how effective those masks are for filtering out all this, because it's that small particular matter which does the damage. But we're out of time, but good to see you. Thank you for the update. Appreciate it.